yet another day to spend time with him, another day to commune with him. I want us to take a short exercise and that is I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. That God has given to us eternal life. That God has given us eternal life. Has given to us. And this life in his, is in his son. Is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. He who was the Son has eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. We have the Son, so we have eternal life. Has eternal life. We have the Son, so we have eternal life. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. I have the Son, oh yes, and I have eternal life. I have the sun. I have the sun. I have the sun. Prophesy. I have his life in me. His power lives in me. We have the sun. So we have eternal life. We have the sun. Just bless the name of the Lord for his manifold blessings in our midst. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Bless his name. Bless his name. God is worthy of praise. Bless your holy I sing your praises forever and I forget not your benefits I bless your holy name I sing your praises forever and I forget not your benefits I will never forget I will not forget, Lord, your benefit. How can I forget? I will not forget. How can I forget your benefit? I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord, your benefit. I will not forget. I will not forget. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to say thank you, Father.
for your faithfulness go ahead and bless him you must have a reason to give him praise you must have a reason because he is faithful lord you have been faithful the psalmist said if the lord had not been on my side now may israel sing that if the lord had not been by my side lord we thank you for your deliverance for your grace for your faithfulness for your mercies bless him for his faithfulness lord we give you all the praise tonight we express our gratitude for your faithfulness for your bountiful blessings for the miracles for the signs for the wonders for the power of your word we give you praise come on bless him in the spirit we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Oh, holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of Hosanna, 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 yeah, Hosanna, Hosanna, yeah, who comes in the name of our Hosanna, 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 yeah, yeah. blessed is he who comes in the name of our God, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God, for thou art worthy, O God to open the book and unlock the scrolls for thou was slain and with your blood you have purchased men out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation and you have made us a people we bless the one who was dead and now is alive and holds the keys lord we give you praise hallelujah every time we appear before his presence it is important that we cultivate the attitude of worship and of expressing our gratitude sammy said if the Lord has not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. God has been faithful in the midst of all the chaos and the deaths and the lamentations around. He has preserved us. Believers must learn that it is an act of worship to give thanks. Bible says in Psalm 100, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. He said, come before him with singing. Hallelujah. It's important that we open up our hearts and express our gratitude. Let me tell you something. Every time you cease to see the relevance of God in your life, all he does is to take a step out of your life. And you will see the chaos that your life will become without him. Hallelujah. I am ever conscious of his presence. I realize that he designed us to be inadequate without him. And forever we are eternally grateful. Hallelujah. 
Lord, we give you praise. Please take on your Bibles. First and foremost, just walk to two or three people. Appreciate them. Walk up to two or three people. Just bless them. Give them a good hug. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Father, we give you praise. Romans chapter 8. Tonight the Lord is going to be provoking us. Hallelujah. The Bible says provoke one another to godliness. God is going to be challenging us. Our goal in this place is to build us, to equip ourselves, hallelujah, to prepare the army of the Lord, the generals who will take charge. We are raising a takeover generation, a generation of men and women who understand their king, understand his ways, and understand his power. Hallelujah. The Bible says, saviors shall come out of Zion. And that they shall judge the mount of Esau. God is depending on us and upon our generation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not compared. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Some version says that creation is waiting for the day and the time when God will reveal who his sons truly are. Hallelujah. Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He said, Now are we the sons and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Hallelujah. And so tonight, God is going to challenge us it is our desire that we come to a point where we truly understand God's ways and his life and his power and his grace. For it is out of the abundance of this revelation that we'll be able to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Lord, let your word come with fire in our spirits. Let your word challenge us. And equip us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Please bring out your Bibles, your writing materials. Verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry. Abba Father. He says, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Verse 17, let's read together. One to read. The A part is my point of emphasis tonight. He says, and if children, then heirs. He says, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Tonight I want to give us a revelation of what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. For many believers, the concept of being one, the concept of our oneness with Christ. I hope you realize that the whole goal of eternal life and the coming of the Spirit in our life is first and foremost to bring us into oneness. Hallelujah. The church is called the bride of Christ. And according to the book of Genesis, when God was speaking, instituting marriage, he told Adam, he says, Wherefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall become what? One flesh. They too, coming from different locations. In this holy matrimony, they become one flesh. 
And now the Bible is saying that the Holy Spirit comes to live in us as a testimony that God has agreed to bring us into oneness. And the Bible says if this statement is true, then it means, it tells us from verse 17, it says, and if children, in other words, if God didn't lie, if it is true that God is saying that he has brought us into oneness, then it means that we are heirs. Hallelujah. It says, heirs of God and joint heirs. Joint heirs with Christ. I pray that your eyes will be open tonight to understand the power and the revelation behind not only being one with Christ, but being a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. The book of Esther, don't turn there. It's a prophetic book that reveals to us the power and the transition of the church of Christ. Coming into that point where we sit with the king. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. This is the prophetic type of Esther, Hadassah. The Bible says she was cut off from the people. She was a slave girl in the countryside. And then the Bible says how that when King Ahasuerus banished Vashti as queen, the Bible says certain people were called. And Esther from nowhere came into a point where she was given the royal crown, the signet ring, instantly she came into honor. And the Bible says that she was made to sit with the king. Hallelujah. And at that point, she had power and authority. You need to realize the implication of what it means to be a Christian. For many of us, being a Christian is just, I know that we have taught about vision and purpose and all of these things. But it is important for us to understand the supernatural dimension and the implication of being a Christian. Hallelujah. Being a Christian is not just one of the many religions we have on the earth. The implication of being a Christian is first and foremost that you have come into oneness say after me oneness oneness when you come into oneness the bible says in genesis chapter 11 talking about nimrod and the tower of babel it says that god looked down and saw that the people although there were many he said the people is one he didn't say are one it may be grammatically wrong but it's spiritually correct he said the people he saw that they were one hallelujah therein lies the revelation of the victory and the authority of the believer that you realize that when you come into christ there is a literal translation first and foremost from the kingdom of darkness the bible says into the kingdom of god's dear son and then he calls the holy spirit the spirit of adoption the one who is able to call different sons what does it mean to adopt to adopt means to pick someone who was not originally yours by hallelujah and bring the person to a point where he becomes a literal benefactor of your benevolence or whatever you have to a point that you can say this is an adopted child you give the child the exact same benefit the bible calls the holy spirit the spirit of adoption the one who is able to adopt the saint and bring him into that point where you are qualified by his grace and by the righteousness of Christ to be an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. I've always given this example, but then let me use it again. Please, someone from come. Hallelujah. Now, all of you watch this. Assuming I own a company. Are you listening to me? I want to show you the revelation of oneness and what it means for us to come into oneness and to be joined heirs with Christ. Assuming I own a company and let's assume that Tosin is a cleaner in that company. Are you following me now? Is a cleaner just sweeping everywhere. And I decide to get married to her. Watch this. The moment are you listening to me? 
the exact moment the pronunciation is made by the pastor that I hereby declare you husband and wife. Listen, the implication is that in the realm of the spirit, God ceases to see two of us as two people. We become joined. Are you listening to me? In theology, we call it the doctrine of interpenetration. The mystery of two people, two separate entities becoming one. This is why the church is called the bride that comes into oneness with Christ. The church is the Eve of Adam. Are you listening to me? Just like, follow me please. In the book of Genesis, the Bible makes us to understand that Adam came into the scene and Eve was there. Are you following me now? The goal, the authority, everything was vested upon Adam. But the Bible makes us to understand that when Satan wanted to get that authority from Adam, he came through Eve. Are you following me now? Eve was the pride and the glory of Adam because she was cut out from him. Hallelujah. And the Bible makes us to understand in the New Testament that Christ has now become that second Adam. Are you listening to me? Now the Eve that belongs to that Adam is no longer a singular person. is a body. The bride of Christ. We have now become the Eve of this second Adam. Are you following me now? So that we are supposed to be joined the exact same way Adam was joined to Eve. And so you see, Satan is using the same strategy in Genesis. Wanting to get Adam, he came through Eve. This is why Satan is haunting the church, who is the bride, the Eve of this Adam. Hallelujah. But then it is important for us to understand the implication of being the bride of Christ. Instantly, Tosin becomes a partaker of everything I own. She begins to bear my name. Are you following me now? Now, watch this. Whether you like her or not is not the issue. There is a present day reality. Are you listening to me? She can tell the driver, please take me somewhere. And the driver will say, you, you, Tosin. And somebody will say, stop calling her Tosin. She's no longer Tosin. Now, watch this. If Tosin does not know that revelation, and there is a bully who has been troubling her before the marriage. Are you listening to me? The bully can look at her and say, if you like, become a gas wife. That's your cup of tea. You are going to sweep this place. What happens? Although it is a present, I have never denied that she's my wife. But she will keep sweeping as though we are not married. Are you listening to me? She will keep sweeping and her words will not have power. Because she has not understood the implication of being my wife. Are you following me now? If for some reason I get to find out and she suddenly comes into that revelation that come, I have the right and the power to suck you out of this company and to bring you. And if you reject and do not stand by my words, the one who made me his wife, it will now be his responsibility to prove whether he lied by telling me I'm his wife or not. So the defense is not your job. Are you listening to me? The defense for it has God designed a man to protect a woman. Is that correct? A man is supposed to defend. So if the woman speaks on behalf of the man and anyone that contends with that statement, the man is supposed to come in. This is how God designed. And so if she talks to that man and says, do not harass me. Listen, the fact that I'm married to her does not change the bully automatically. He will keep being a bully. He will test her understanding of the implication of what it means to come into this new position. Now, she's used to sweeping. She's not used to somebody driving her in a jeep. Are you listening to me? And calling her good morning, ma. So, sometimes her mindset can make her so humble. She'll say, let me just take this broom and help you. But whether or not she chooses that that is not the present reality according to the agreement now when she comes into an understanding one day she will take the marriage certificate and come and summon all the workers and say by the terms that are in this certificate that i'm showing you it has been written here can you see my name signed here are you following me now and the moment she's speaking i will come and stand by her side and said i hope you are hearing from that moment listen from that moment, it has not only been that. Now, watch this. Two scenes here. Number one, it is true that I'm married to her. 
but she's still suffering. Are you following me now? She's still suffering. Does that change the fact that I'm faithful? Are you listening to me? Marriage is the best description of our oneness and the implication of what it means to be joint heirs. Joint heirs. Are you following me now? Now, the difference between a co-heir and a joint heir is this. Let me have another person. Yes, please. If the music director is my business associate, we are not joint heirs. Are you following me now? We are called co-heirs. Because if we need capital to start a project, hallelujah, assuming we need 1 million naira, I can bring 600,000 and he brings how much? 400,000. Are you following me now? Our profit is shared according to our contribution. Are you following me now? That means the day he decides to get angry, we're in trouble. Are you following me now? So, but in this case, she didn't do anything. She only told me yes. Are you following me now? And everything I have instantly belongs to her. There is a difference between being a joint heir and a co-heir. There are many believers that are trying to be co-heirs with God. The Bible never calls us co-heirs with Christ. Don't be so spiritual that you argue the reality of what is in the word of God. It was inspired by the spirit. A joint heir is number one. One who has come into oneness. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. That means you possess his life. The life of God is in you. Are you listening to me? You must understand the power and the implication of having what we call eternal life. Eternal life is not the life you will have when you get to heaven. No, that's not eternal life. Eternal life is God's life supplanting your biological life literally so that you begin to exist with another dimension of life. It's a supernatural life higher than all the limits in this realm. Either God is lying or you believe it. The implication of being one with Christ is first and foremost that we are partakers of his divine nature not partakers of his nature there is a reason why the bible says that nature is divine partakers of his divine nature hallelujah that means we are connected watch this we are connected every time christ is honored if it is true that we are one the church must be honored that's why every time you praise God, you also receive a portion of that blessing. Every time you truly praise and worship God and nothing happens to you, then it, it means God has lied. You see the power of praise and worship. Because whatever is happening to him must also happen to you. This is the implication of being one. The, the Israelites understood this. He said, touch them not, they are the apple of my eyes. Hallelujah. Do you realize the implication of being one with Christ? Watch this. I am one with Tosin. When we go to the market, we are going together. Are you listening to me? Every time anybody wants to speak evil against me, hallelujah, assuming I am somewhere and she's not there, if I hear you talking about her, what, what do you expect me to do? Just smile and say, wow, you are a very smart person. I live to promote her interest in her own realm whenever she hears you saying anything about me because we are one are you following me now the concept of oneness does not mean you are in the same location necessarily that you have been joined in life in purpose in vision are you listening to me her pain becomes my pain her joy becomes my joy her vision becomes my vision do you understand the implication of being a joint heir with Christ hallelujah that means if jesus is righteous i am righteous oh yes whether i feel like it or not it, either god is lying it's a present day reality accept it this is the truth in christ
So every time I stand before principalities and powers, the first revelation in the realm of the spirit is the one to find out whether you are in Christ or not. Outside of Christ, you do not have a platform to do anything. Are you listening to me? The basis for everything in the spirit is that you are in Christ. In Christ. Outside of Christ, you do not have a say. You do not have a platform. So in Christ, when I speak to a sick body and I command that cancer to leave, what they are saying, I'm speaking on behalf of the authority and the government of heaven. Are you listening to me? If the person does not get healed, are you listening to me? It's left for the one I'm representing to validate his reputation because it's at stake there. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou, who is the thou? Thou art with me. He says, if it is true that we are children, that we have been adopted, called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, partakers of his divine life. Partakers of his divine life. What is the life of God? What is it? What is the divine life of God? Let me tell you what the divine life of God is. The divine life of God is everything that makes him God. Everything. Every attribute that can be found. Because Christ is the express image of God. So whatever Christ came to give us a sample of everything that can be found in the Father. Hallelujah. And so Christ is the expression. The Bible calls him the express image of the Father. What does that mean? That means that if it is true that the life of God is in us, then Christ becomes our standard. That everything that flowed through Christ, his glory, his power, his grace, should find expression in us. Sons of adoption. So if I speak in the realm of the spirit and my words have no implication, then it means my oneness has a problem in the realm of the spirit. It means it has not been established and it has not been recognized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now watch this. Before we got married, she had her ideologies and her limitations. Watch this. When we get married and I'm the man and she's the woman, who submits to who? What does it mean to submit? To bring your strength and your value system and everything to conformity. Are you listening to me? That, that becomes the basis. Because although I am married to her, she can choose to take her mindset of being a sweeper. It doesn't change the fact that I'm her husband. But she's going to suffer the consequence. And by implication, it's going to affect me. Do you understand? So the Bible says, this is God's present day reality. Now come into alignment. That's what we call the renewing of the mind. Coming into alignment with God's perspective about you. And God's reality about you. Let me tell you what God has to say about his bride. Hebrews chapter 2. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 5. Are you there? God's purpose. Hmm. I want to show you what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. We are examining the implications of being joint heirs with Christ. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come of which we speak. Verse 6. But one in a certain place talking about David. Psalms 8. Testifying saying. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man 
that thou visitest him. Seven. It says, thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over what? Read it. Read it. It's in your Bible. And you set him where? Is it in your Bible? Did he say the man grew there? He said, God set him. That is an appointment. God set him and said, come. I set you over everything I have created. He said, God set him over the works of his hand. God says, the jurisdiction of your rulership is everything that came from my hand. So long as I am the one who created it, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm, I bring, I pray. get what I'm preaching. Are you getting me tonight? You must get this as a revelation. So what did God create? Start naming them. One to go. Name them, you're laughing. What did God create? Because the Bible tells us that he put all of those things in subjection to man. The atmosphere. The animals. Weather. Territories. Land. The resources in the deep. He said God has placed man. He brought all of these things in subjection to man. That is the reward you get for being the bride of the owner of the whole world. Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Now you have become his bride. And he says, look, I put all things under your subjection. I put all things. You people name everything God created. You didn't name them all. Satan. Demons. The fallen angels. He said, I put them in subjection. Principalities. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I put them in submission. Let's read on. Now watch this. It says, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He did what? He said he left. Come on, read it. It's in your Bible. That means God didn't make any mistake. That later you say, ah, I forgot to put Satan under your feet. No. He said God was thorough. He made no mistake. He put all things. All things. God is not scratching his head saying, what kind of costly mistake did I make? The bride. The bride. The eve of this second Adam. Do you realize that even when it comes to calling Jesus back to the earth, it is the spirit and the bride that says come. The spirit alongside with the bride call their husband and say come the spirit and the bride say come I give you the highest oh I'm not ordinary I'm not ordinary I give you the loudest I lift my holy hands. I express to the King. I give you, I give you, help me. I give you the high praise. I give you, Lord, we give you praise you for what you have I done for us. Give you the high Listen, listen. I give listen. you. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Watch this. I need to deliver us from a Christianity that allows every and anything to happen around us. The Bible says, 
God has brought, I, I use this lady to give you something. That means, see, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He said, but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Hear this. He says, then you shall make your way. Who will make it? It's in your Bible. You shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Kaparia kata. So, your finances is under your control. Your health under your control. Your life under your control. Your longevity in life under your control. Your victory. It says God put all things under subjection to the man he created. God made no mistake. So everything, listen, listen. The Holy Ghost comes to live in you. And directs you to champion the course of your destiny according to the knowledge that is gained from the word of God and then Jesus came watch this Jesus came listen let me tell you the implication of the coming of Jesus do you realize that Jesus came and acted the part of the woman for you to watch he came and became what he wants you to be walked upon the earth showed you victory over sickness victory over everything unconditional love they wanted to throw him from a cliff he walked through them died conquered death they were looking for money he was stranded he said go to the fish i am convinced that the money came at the mouth the moment he spoke he said i am so powerful i can use anything go to that fish bring out a coin in John 21, listen when he resurrected in John 21 the Bible says the disciples were struggling to catch fish there was no fish, at his word they caught fish and the net was about to sink, the Bible says Peter wore his clothes and ran and he came and met Jesus already roasting fish, where did he get his own from? he said to no angel listen I will tell you why he said to no angel. Do you realize that Lucifer was a fallen angel? Do you realize that the angels of God are loyal? Satan as a fallen angel is claiming ownership and God is saying let me inform you. I did not give any angel any angel the earth. So any angelic being in heaven or in the earth that claims ownership of the earth is doing it illegally. He says to no angel did he ever say that you'll be a partaker he did not put the world under the subjection of any angel the secret of victory in life is to accept by faith are you listening to me that you are supernatural because you are the bride of Christ you have come into oneness we are partakers i am a partaker see that's why my life will keep soaring from glory to glory it's not because my name is joshua selman i understand the implication of what it means to be one with christ take me anywhere i know the end glory glory the glory of god hear me so when you understand this there is nothing in the kingdom called disadvantage. Cancel it out of your life quickly. Yeah. What then is the basis of saying you are disadvantaged? Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter what situation. You know you are victorious because you are the bride of Christ. When Jesus faced situations, he didn't cry and wail and do as if he didn't have anything to do about it. The Bible says even Jesus knew what to do. He knew what to do. Hallelujah. 
when they met him with a hard question they said this woman was called caught in adultery and moses wrote in his law that if a woman be caught in adultery she should be stoned so what do you have to say suddenly he tapped from the bank of the wisdom of the spirit and he simply answered them he says he who does not have sin among you should cast the first stone the bible says they were convicted from their hearts and they threw back the stone from the oldest it's beautiful that he started from the oldest because he was matured enough to have that common sense from the oldest down to the youngest and he looked at the woman and said woman where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more Do you believe that you are one with Christ? Do you believe it? The times that are coming will test that revelation. Hallelujah. Now, from the story I gave here, watch this. From the story I gave here, how did she demonstrate her oneness? How did she demonstrate her oneness? My wife in this example hallelujah number one she came into terms with it is that correct number two she began to announce it using the marriage certificate as the basis are you following me now that's when you come into that the first revelation is to accept it accept that in christ is your inheritance to live a prosperous life many of us do not believe that this is possible oh not in nigeria who told you It's possible to live in divine health. It's not just possible. It's your heritage. It's not a product of fasting and prayer. It's God's present day gift for you as being his bride. The only limit you have in Christ is the limit that Jesus too has. His limit becomes your limit. That's the reason why, listen. Watch this every time god speaks to you he speaks to you from his realm of ability and reality god can look at you and say most um he says moses tell the people to move forward was god stupid was he not seeing the red sea he said moses tell them to move forward you do not know the person you are in partnership with ask them to move forward when joshua was afraid he said joshua be strong as i was with moses i am with you be strong and of good courage every time god is about to set you on assignment he reminds you that you are not alone this is the secret of great men this is the secret of generals they came to a point where they they got a revelation every time i pray for the sick the lord taught me this that's why many times i take a while before i start ministering i'm coming into that alignment that i am not alone i'm not alone so i sing songs that reminds me of his presence look at what god is doing in this ministry does it not tell you that these are not the works of a man what kind of intelligence can make a young man or young people to do this doesn't it tell you that it looks like there is a bigger person Young Cho says the Holy Spirit, my senior partner. And with the ministry and oneness with that senior partner, he produced the largest church in the world till date. An ordinary Korean that does not even understand English very well. So it's not about oratory that Americans teach how to do this, seven steps to do these stories. If you are not in your oneness with him, you will be shocked. Are you understanding this? Tonight I'm here to provoke you and then we'll pray that you are one with Christ. So as you're writing your test and writing your exams, you are one with Christ. You are one with Christ. You are one with Christ. That's why the sister could get her, her job out of over 500 or 200 people. See, 
when you see some people blessed for no reason, stop looking at them. Look at the person they are in unity with. See, listen, let me tell you the implication of coming into oneness with someone. When David became king in Israel, he said, Is there any man in Saul's house that I may show him kindness? Who was brought? They brought a cripple called Mephibosheth. Hey. Mephibosheth sat at the royal table, although he was crippled, because he was called by the king. Mephibosheth was called and he was honored. The same food the king ate, he ate. Hallelujah. That's why you can see a man who does not speak good English, but God is still using him. You can see a man who is not fine, is not handsome, it doesn't matter. Demons still cry out because it's not about your looks, it's about your oneness. 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 In many African countries, they don't preach in English. They cast out devils in their local dialects. The devils have never argued that they don't understand the language. Never. I am one with Christ. His supernatural life lives in me. Are you following me now? So you are not weak. Many of you are waiting until the day you become a man or a woman of God. No. This revelation has an implication. There is nothing I will do in this life that I will not emerge at the top. It sounds like pride, but I'll be lying if I don't tell you this. It's not because of me. There is no project by the grace of God. All from the time he and I started, there is nothing we have laid our hands to do that we did not accomplish. Not because we are great men. Are you listening to me? Because we have a great husband. So you can walk in divine health. Why? I am one with him. His life lives in me. That no demon can come and disturb you. Listen. Can I challenge you friends? Get angry and solve this issue of demons once and for all in your life. Hear me. It was not designed to be a struggle. There's no demon that has threatened Jesus from his throne in heaven. Are you listening to me when you are entering a car to travel be conscious of the fact that he is with you are you understanding what i'm saying there are deaths happening everywhere i'm sure you have been getting reports of people dying and all of this i feel very sad and grieved in my heart and we pray that god will keep these people but now that you are alive do you believe your life is by chance I'm challenging you tonight do you realize there is nothing called chance in the realm of the spirit everything happens as a result of cause and effect you are not gathered today by chance are you listening to me it is not by chance Jesus did not become Lord of all by chance you don't become healthy by chance. Are you listening to me? You don't become prosperous by chance. You don't become anointed by chance. It's by light. The illumination of the word of God engrafted in your spirit. You don't speak to Satan and say, Satan, leave. And then he leaves by chance. There is no chance about it. Am I convincing you? Get angry and believe this. So if you are to advance in your life, it's not going to be by chance. Satan is not invading this world by chance. Channel O is not taking over by chance. Are you listening to me? MTV is not moving by chance. What's the name of this Nigerian rapper that's those guys that sing all kinds of of songs 
that you cannot even resist buying the album. They sing rubbish and nonsense. Is that called chance? Some of them slept in graves for days, received powers and anointings, came back, wrote nonsense on tapes, and there is a force moving men beyond their control. Come on, nothing happens in life by chance. Success is not by chance. Long life is not by chance. All the people in the early days of the Bible lived long, not by chance. And he slept with his fathers. And he lived a good old age and slept with his father. And he lived a good old age and slept with his father. We travel all the time. I have never feared death in my life. Are you listening to me? Why? We live in a hostile environment. We preach and we walk among people. All kinds of people. I've gone to Yola. I've gone to Maiduguri. I went to Maiduguri on road. I missed my flight. I went on road on a Friday. And we started the journey in the afternoon. You need the word of God to come alive in your spirit. I am convinced that no man can kill me until my assignment is over. This is a revelation I have given to myself. If it were death, I would have died since. Are you listening to me? You don't know the story of my life. If you know the story of my life, you will know that the word of God is not a mistake. I was diagnosed of fungal infection. My head was literally rotting. Are you listening to me? My mother is alive. I have classmates, you can ask them. There was no drug that was used on me. Everything, the doctors were tired. I moved from teaching hospital to teaching hospital. I've seen the power of God. If you live your life to chance, you will die a beggar in this life. There's no chance in this life. Everything happens as a definite operation of God's principle. I've been hit by a car. Are you listening to me? I've met with armed robbers on the road. I have met demons. What has happened again? All kinds of things. My eyes, my eyes. I have been that demons have oppressed me. Oh, demons oppressed me for a long time in my life. And today we keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. We live and we move. We plan our activities with no room for Satan. You think it's Satan's will for you to be hearing this word and to be building yourself in grace? See, Paul said we make our boast in the Lord. The problem is there is no other way to communicate this without sounding like you are boasting. I'll never be poor in this life. Never. It's not a confession. It's a present. It's the, I will never, the same way I can never be a woman. That's the exact same way. Never. I can never be a failure in this life. Please don't take it for pride. I am speaking on account of the revelation of my oneness with Christ. You don't need to travel to Dubai or Hawaii for greener pastures. That's nonsense. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He didn't mention the name of any country in this world. In green pastures. Green pastures is a spiritual location. Where the word of God gains consistent fruitfulness in your life. Hi. Whatsoever he doeth. Are you following me now? Jacob went to the house of Laban. Suddenly, Laban began to prosper. And this was his testimony. He said, I come to terms with the fact that I have been blessed for your sake. When the ark of the covenant was being restored, it was temporarily kept in Obededom's house. And within that period, Obededom flourished. Listen, 
kill all of the excuses and all of the things you are putting and take charge from tonight take charge because the earth has been given unto you your finances will not grow a miracle and change one day your health will not change one day demons will not just come are you listening to me things will begin to change the day that you receive as an act of humility what Christ has done for you everywhere you take me the grace of God will distinguish me it's not because of me Esther was scattered among many women but something separated her are you listening to me do you believe what I'm teaching tonight it must have an implication in your life so you expect the blessings that come to your life on account of your oneness with Christ everywhere I go to becomes the garden of Eden why the garden of Eden because that's, that was where God designed for man in the first place and the Holy Spirit leads you your life becomes beauty and glory do you believe this so it is within your power to change your finances are you hearing me don't say I'm young don't say I'm old it's within your power to stop demons from oppressing your life it's within your power to speak and expect a manifestation in your life if I bless you sir honestly with all humility you are blessed you will see it in your life hallelujah so your life is supposed to have prophetic implication that anywhere you are something is about to happen let me use the words of Paula De Farrasen, that everywhere you go something is about to, everywhere Jesus went to you knew that just give a little time you will hear that something has happened there he, he, he always there was a prophetic implication so anywhere God takes you because you are one with him there should be a prophetic implication of your presence he takes me into a wilderness I turn that wilderness into a fruitful vine and I turn that fruitful vine into a forest mission accomplished he takes me to the valley of the shadow of death where there are dry bones i turn every dry bone into an exceeding great army mission accomplished the bible says that weak and beggarly men were brought to the cave of adulam where david was and david turned those people into mighty warriors to the time to a point where david said oh that i would drink of the pool of bethlehem and the bible says three of those men killed all the armies and went and fetched water and brought for david he said the men were mighty they fought with swords and their hands cleaved to the sword it will not fall mastery you can turn anybody that's why i don't care who you are when you sit under this anointing there is transformation your life must change because of the prophetic implication of the presence of god Great men and women like Catherine Kuhlman, William Branham, they understood their oneness and the prophetic implication was across their communities. Hallelujah. And so you speak over your life and you declare. You may look ordinary, but not when you begin to speak. When you begin to speak and declare that I am blessed. Oh, I'm blessed in the city blessed in the country i see no limits the hand of god is upon me i see no limitations in my life the strength of god is at work in me no weakness the bible says none was weak none was feeble all through their road in the wilderness none was sick none was feeble their clothes grew with them joint heirs joint heirs Say after me, I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Say, I'm a joint heir with Christ. I partake in royalty. I partake in dominion. I partake in prosperity. I partake in divine health. Yes. Yes.
yes you must prophesy this this must become your confession on account of what Christ has done hallelujah you must be open to prophecy and to visions why the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and the Holy Spirit is the one who testifies about Jesus and he lives in you he is the spirit of prophecy quickened in your inner man and so you can see so you can hear don't say I can't hear the voice of God my sheep hear my voice you plot evil against me you are only going to frustrate yourself because I will climb you and your your plant and just walk he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointed my head with oil the testimony will keep being from glory to glory from glory to glory oh yes from glory to glory you will never hear about a worse tomorrow it's from glory to glory are you listening to me that whatever challenge you face in the midst of that challenge you stamp it and you keep smiling as if you are not seeing anything I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in his grace. I believe in who Jesus is. I believe in my oneness with him. Hallelujah. A gentleman here, some groups of young men, I think they were in the occult or something. They used to come for koinonia right from when they were in that occultic thing. And so they came and they were confessing to me. Can I be honest with you? I wasn't even interested in what they were saying. I was going to have a meeting soon. It wasn't an issue. Whatever the plan is, the Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand. See, it's a different thing if I have not faced some of these things and I'm talking. Then it's easy to say he's shouting. Let me tell you, there are few things you have faced in life that I have not faced. I tell you with all humility. If it's financial stress, we have faced it. Are you listening to me? I am not married, but we have enjoyed the burden of being real fathers. In terms of the financial implication on people, in terms of the psychological implication, I know that the word of God works. You must convince yourself and stop arguing it. There are many of you that it has not yet become a reality. It's easy to jump in church and to talk. That you tell yourself, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I am a partaker of his divine nature. If he is a king, then I am a king. There is no true king without authority. Hallelujah. And what you see the Lord doing in our midst is the awe-inspiring hand of God. His signature that truly shows that he is the husband of the bride. That's why we give him all the glory. That's why there's no reason to brag and make noise. But I cannot but tell you, this is the truth. This is your heritage in Christ. That when you come into the revelation of your oneness with Christ, it doesn't matter whether you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can change things. Stop saying things will change. Start changing them. One day, in the sweet by and by, things will be better. When? Our parents said this from the days of your youth. Oh, things will change, I know. Since when you were crawling, things will change. Things will change. Now you're almost getting married, things will change. And what your father didn't tell you, is now telling you. He's saying, thank God you are now a man. You will change the things. Hallelujah. I find it very difficult teaching on things like this. Because the only way to teach about this is to, it sounds like you are bragging about it. But there's no other way to express it in that truth. Are you listening to me? It's just like looking at your friends and saying, I am married. You know, sometimes you can feel, am I hurting them? But is it a lie? Or 
that they made your father a senator. And you say, my daddy just became a senator. Some things, as painful as it is to convey them, they are the truth. Jesus said, before your father Abraham, I am. It wasn't a lie. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. How about Jesus? He will see people who were older than him. And he was saying, my little children. See, see. I hope you realize that everybody, the disciples that were older than Jesus, were older than him by more than two years. Because all his colleagues, two years and below, were killed when he was small. So Peter, Peter was married because Jesus healed his mother-in-law. So Peter he was rebuking Satan out of Peter. And he called them little children. A man who was born in their presence. This is what pained the people. They said, this is not Joseph's son. Enough is enough, you this small boy. Just like they look at us and speak. And say, how can a small boy like you say you are prophesying to people? Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am. In as much as we try to be humble, he has anointed us. We cannot deny it. As much as we try, I am blessed. I am victorious. Is the truth from God's standpoint. We are a blessed people. Accept it. And give him glory for it. We are dressing nice. Let God be praised. Hallelujah. It is because of what Christ has done. I apologize if we sound proud. Are you listening to me? But I'm challenging you. It is what he gave us. He gave us. It's an inheritance in Christ. That's why the worshippers minister like angels. They minister with the revelation that they are one. That's why the media keep moving from glory to glory. It's not by chance. That's why the ushers keep moving by, from grace to grace. See, listen, that's why we will keep getting sinners saved. Sinners will keep coming and they'll keep getting born again. No devil will stop them. Because it's the authority of Christ that is in motion. Are you listening to me? For four years, we kept meeting while on campus. Many people will come in the night. For four years, some of you never slept between Sunday and Monday. In the rain, in the sun. No chair, no seat, no balloon, no poster. How can you explain that? People criticize us of doing jazz. They criticize us of doing everything. They still say it till today, till tomorrow. People hear of the miracles and they talk. Did that leg really grow? Did that hand grow? Did the SS change? See, in Christ, you are a wonder. You are a sign and a wonder. Are you listening to me? In Christ. When Changfa stands to prophesy, when Manasseh prophesies, he says, How are these people? These people have taught something. You have robbed something on your. Rob what? Rob what? Hallelujah. Many of you are surprised to see how changed and transformed you are. You gave up on yourself, but see what God has done in your life today. It is a product. I'm challenging you. From tonight, realize that you are a partaker of his royalty. You are not weak. You are not beggarly. You have the power to bless. You have the power to call for things that be not as though they were. Create a future out of the word of God. Your words have prophetic implications. Speak as the bride of Christ that you are. Hallelujah. I say it with all humility. Ask all the leaders. From the time we started Koinonia, 
by the grace of God and to the glory of the Father above, we have never had a meeting. Ask them. Never had a meeting to discuss and say, where will we get the money for this week? No. Hallelujah. Where is it coming from? Have we ever come to rob your house? Did you ever see me with something on my face? And I say, man, I say, through the fence, this way. Every Thursday night. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. You are one with Christ. His ability flows through you. His wisdom flows through you. I can never meet a challenge in my life. Give me time, I will solve it. Give me time. I will disengage my wisdom and tap into a higher wisdom. Take me anywhere. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. There is an ability in me. I have knowledge. Epignosis is the knowledge of the spirit beyond my age, beyond my level of experience, beyond my exposure. When I speak to you, I engage the ability of the spirit. If I bless you, you are blessed. Hear me. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. That is your heritage in Christ. That is your heritage in Christ. You can bless. You can speak. Prophesy. You're tired of sickness. Tell yourself, I refuse sickness. I refuse it. Stop giving excuses for it. Every time you have ideas and projects, nothing is coming in your head. Lay hands and say, I engage the ability of the spirit bigger than my own. You are in class and a curse is threatening you. Get angry. Many of you are afraid of your exams. There are sicknesses that come when you are about to write your exam. Many of you have already bought all the drugs. You have arranged them. Many of you are already worried now. Where will I get the money to buy provisions during exams? And you have started thinking. You have, you have been typing text for three days. Hiding it in your draft. About the kind of lie you will give your parents to send you money. You say, ah, my father knows. I used this one last time. Where will you change and believe the word of God? Let God be true. And let every man be a liar. Do you not believe that God can move men? To bless you hallelujah your roommate is complaining every time she has epilepsy she has epilepsy every time you come you lay your hands and say how is your epilepsy don't just laugh about it we are going to pray I'm challenging you God will never take responsibility for your future to the degree that you should take it his responsibility is to watch over his word to perform it. Kenneth Hagin, please let me have someone come. Just say, sir. Kenneth Hagin, go and read his book, I Believe in Visions. This was his encounter. Jesus was speaking to him. Just stand there. Jesus was speaking to him. Are you listening to me? And suddenly, a demon came in between them. And the demon began to jump. And Jesus kept speaking. Can you imagine? How can a demon come to insult the king of kings and the lord of lords? Jesus kept speaking. And he wasn't hearing Jesus because the demon was shouting and making noise. At a point, Kenneth E. Hagin, he was angry. He felt embarrassed. How can Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose again, he's speaking and a demon is jumping. And at a point by divine illumination, Kenneth Hagin looked at the demon and said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And the demon disappeared and left. Hear what Jesus told him. He said, if you did not do anything about it, there is nothing I would have done. Oh God, when will you change my life? The day you accept the fact that you are one with Christ and begin to take your rightful place. In Christ hallelujah this is one of the blessings of prayer because it offers you the opportunity to speak to Hagar to 
declare. The Bible says, Job 22 verse 28, it says, And thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. He said, where the word of a king is, there is power. Words have prophetic implications. I don't waste my words because I realize they carry power. Are you listening to me? True believers are not noisemakers. They understand the prophetic implication of their words. The Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake. Because their job is to accomplish the words that are spoken by the saints. We are going to pray and make some decrees over our lives. Are you listening to me? From today, realize that you are ruling and you are reigning with Christ. Say after me, I am royalty. I am one with Christ. My presence has prophetic implications. Yes. When you come into a room, your roommates should start dancing and rejoicing. There are some people you can do anything to be roommates with. You can pay for the room and say, come. Somehow you know that their presence carry prophetic implication. Look at how they sought after Jesus Christ. They just wanted his presence in a place. Because his presence carried prophetic implications. Every time I go to a house or I go everywhere, I am conscious of his presence. And so when I step in and sit down, I know that the king of glory is sitting. As I speak, I am his ambassador. I am his bride. He is committed to back me up. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. He says, amplified. He says that God is alert and active. Watching over his word to perform it. Hallelujah. There are implications of being a joint heir with Christ. That you have the righteousness of Christ and you are the righteousness of Christ. Say after me, I am the righteousness of Christ. Above condemnation. Above guilt. Yes. This is God's present reality. Above guilt. Satan cannot look at Paul and say, Saul, you used to persecute the church. Paul was so free of guilt that he could say his testimony and go and sleep about it. He said, I, Paul, used to persecute the church. And he didn't feel bad about it. He went and slept. The greatest proof that you have conquered an issue is that you can talk about it freely. Are you listening to me? Divine health is your heritage. It's your heritage in Christ. I emphasize divine health from your mind, from your spirit. Are you listening to me? You have headache when you are writing exams. Someone, I heard someone gave a testimony some weeks ago that used to sleep in the exam hall. Many of you don't sleep. You have all kinds of pills in your house. You have to take five or six. You are less than 25. You are already taking pills as if you are 70 years. While the Bible says the age, their age will be like the age of a tree. Hallelujah. I'm not against medication. Don't, don't take me wrong. I'm only challenging you not to be complacent over things that are taking the place of the word of God in your life. Are you listening to me? You are doing your project and there's no idea. Your lecturer calls you dull. Say, Holy Spirit, I may be dull in myself, but let's walk together and show this man. Let him know there is a wisdom. He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say you are going for your defense you are fidgeting the bible says when you stand before them you shall not be afraid of what to say for in that very same hour it will not be you speaking but the spirit of your father hallelujah when you stretch your hands to bless a man they look ordinary you just add eba with it yes but it has prophetic implications that when you lay your hands upon this lady and say sweetheart you are blessed suddenly the heavens remember the meeting last week the heavens begin to shift and to change 
to accommodate what you have spoken. Hallelujah. There are things in our lives that we have left the responsibility for God. Every day I keep speaking. I say I'm established as a man. I'm established. If you're waiting for your job to establish you, be sure you'll be established at age 50. I've said it here. Let me challenge the guys before we pray. How much is one block? Have you asked? How much is one block? How much? Eh? 200? 110 naira. How many of them do you, how much is the salary you will collect net? Aside from tight and your parents and all that. The moment you get a job, the hands that are waiting to receive the salary will run you in deficit. Your father, your mother, all the people that you are going to bless. And those people, you will bless them legitimately. Hallelujah. Marriage right now is like a building project. You build foundation and then you breathe in. You rest. And then when these people that carry scaffold for building, there's something they say, oh, hey, hey. and then they say, oh, yeah, let's go. And then they move. except god helps you except you come into alignment do you realize the prophetic implication of creating your future by speaking this is not about being a pentecostal this is god's weapon kings reign by their words if it is true that you are a partaker of god's divine nature then it is your job to begin to paint your destiny in the place of prayer that's why see prayer is not just a ritual to feel spiritual and to fall it is god's tool for spiritual architecture you build your life i don't just allow anything happen in my life and then you say whatever will be will be let me tell you the truth is what you don't want that will be when you leave a farm without plowing it something will grow what's the name what did you define with in your primary science some of you jump class what is it called unwanted plants they are plants but they are unwanted so tonight i'm challenging you that you are a joint heir with christ you must tell yourself i refuse to die until my assignment is over and i will transit with dignity and honor satan will tell you you are the one that has the big mouth to say this every time he tells you remember the story where's tosin one more time please come again remember the all of you look at her so that as you pray i face every time satan wants to speak remember the bully in my story is satan I'm speaking a parable now. You people are not like the disciples of old. You are supposed to ask me to interpret. And then I'll say the bully is Satan. The husband is the husband man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Although she has been married into royalty, her lack of knowledge or taking steps in that regard still crippled her. Do you know that every time we accuse God, God feels very bad on the throne because he ever remains faithful. Are you listening to me? You must rise up. The Bible says arise. You must arise before you shine. Arise. Shake up the dust. Tell yourself the Lord according to Hebrews 2 has put all things. Where? 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 Where is Satan? Where is poverty? Where is sickness? Where is failure? You must believe it. Don't just say, Kai, this coin on here, we are behaving like children. You, you better take it seriously. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come on, just pray in the spirit for a while. Pray in the spirit for a while. Walk around. Walk around. Come on. Walk around. Walk around.
Zebra non zebra di bondi in bossa tali bradassa sopra di ba Catali ba corre bossa tali bandi di bossa sopra di ba Le pato sopra di ba Catala ba ba do per di bossa tada Lemba caposa si catala ba E cre che te ba che 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 le bossa Pari catali ba corre bondi che bossa tada Pray the spirit Charge up your spirit man Because we are about to prophesy We are about to decree We are about to establish Come on, walk around, walk around, pray. All things, she has put all things in subjection. All things, poverty, failure. My prosperity is under my control. My destiny. Se para Listen. All of you listen, please. Let me teach you how to change things in life. Let me teach you how to change things. Many of you don't know how to change things in the spirit. Let me teach you. It's not just about blindly praying in tongues. Let me teach you something. Do you know what the Bible calls Yazar? The power of creative imagination. Are you listening to me? Every time you are praying in tongues and you are praying to the end that you want to establish something in the spirit are you listening to me as you are praying in tongues employ the power of prophetic imagination put that limitation before your eyes are you listening to me and pray squarely like a priest if you are speaking against health or sickness see it see yourself rising in health are you listening to me and then you will begin to be conformed to what you are seeing. If you are speaking about your finances, begin to see the new you working in finances, in grace, in glory. Don't just pray blindly and allow your mind to roam around. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. <laughs> She <laughs> She pray the spirit. Charge your spirit, man. Because we are about to prophesy. We are about to decree. We are about to establish. All things. All things. Under his control. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. 
One more time, let me read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 8. Thou has put all things. Pick up your Bible because you are going to personalize it. I am in control. No matter how things get, I am in control. I am in control. Yes. 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 You are not out of control. Say I am in control. No matter how bad things are, I am in control. I am in control. You are not see. Listen, listen. Hold on. Hold on, please. Hold on. I know we like saying God is in control. Hallelujah. That is right. But now, when you say I am in control, you are not replacing God. Are you listening to me? What you are saying is that, look, as a king, no matter what it is, it's not enough to make me stand up from my throne. I am in control. The whole earth is still in chaos. Jesus is still seated on the throne. Are you listening to me? We are going to read the A part of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Hallelujah. We are going to read it up to the part that it says, He left nothing that is not put under him. Everywhere there is him, you are going to put your name. Not me, me is not your name. Are you listening to me? Are you ready now? Want to read verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection to Joshua Selman's feet. For in that you put all things under Joshua Selman, you left nothing that is not put under him. Listen. How many things are within your control? Listen. The word under your feet simply is a prophetic language. It was an ancient language that meant you are in control. How many things are you in control of? Your finances. Your health. Now you are going to prophesy. Are you listening to me? You're, listen. You are going to prophesy in the name of the one that you are in oneness with. Begin to call forth your health, your finances, wisdom. Prophesy. I am in control. I am in control in the name of Jesus. I am in control of my environment, of everything that happens around me. Hallelujah. I am in control. I refuse to be sick. I am above sickness. I refuse poverty. I am in control. In the name of Jesus. My presence carries a prophetic implication. Bless. I call finances. In the name of Jesus, wisdom, 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 the spirit of revelation, insight, power, advancement. I am well favored. I am honored. Hallelujah. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I am not weak 
and beggarly. He has called me. Separada da bakota da, separada da bakota, separada da bakota, jilibonda da bakota, sekata da bakota. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Listen, many of you, on account of your oneness with Christ, you have suffered, literally. Why will you not be glorified? on account of your oneness with Christ. Many of you, on account of your oneness, you have been criticized. On account of your oneness, you have experienced it. Why will you not be honored on account of your oneness? We like suffering for Christ. We run away from being honored by Christ, for Christ, and with Christ. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to speak to things. Listen, you are not praying to God. Are you listening to me? You are wearing your kingly crown and you are going to begin to decree. The Bible says in Job 22, 28 And thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Listen, he told Job, he said, Job, hast thou commanded thy morning? Have you spoken to the atmosphere to respond according to the word of God? The Bible says the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty. And then he begins to speak from there. We are going to decree. Listen. You are going to give boundaries to everything called evil in your life. Are you listening to me? You are going to draw a line. The Bible says oppression shall be far from thee. It is within your power to speak. Now is not the time to stare at your neighbor. Now is the time to speak. Tell yourself, death, you are under my feet. Failure, sickness. Prophesy for yourself, for your family, for your family. No death, no sickness. Prophesy your words have prophetic implications. Speak to the atmosphere. Impregnate the womb of the morning. Let the atmosphere be pregnant with the words that you speak. Your words have prophetic implications. Make sure you are Make sure you I ever increasing glory ever increasing grace ever increasing grace ever increasing finances ever increasing health ever increasing honor ever increasing wisdom prophesy son of man prophesy son of man prophesy Prophesy to the heavens. Prophesy to the heavens. Prophesy to the heavens. Prophesy to the heavens. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to speak over your exams? Now that you know who you are. Are you ready to prophesy? Listen. Listen. You're going to call all your courses one by one. Are you listening to me? One by one. And declare. And say, open up unto me. Open up. Listen. You're going to receive wisdom. Insight. Favor. Come on, begin to pray. Prophesy. The time has come. Arise. The time has come.
Prophesy. Prophesy. Call yourself the head, not the tail. Prophesy. You are both. You are both. You are both. Prophesy. No missing script. No missing script. Prophesy. No victimization. No victimization. Prophesy. Favor. Favor. In every cause. Favor. Favor for you. Prophesy. Your words have prophetic implications. Prophesy. Make up this. Make up this. Prophesy. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord declared to us this year that it's a season of great grace and glory. Listen, these are not imaginary spiritual things. I need you to know that we are not drinking tea when the word just came on our head. Are you listening to me? He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. You are going to pray for yourself. This is not for your neighbor. Are you listening to me? Invoke it from the spirit and say it's a season of great grace glory honor a distinguishing come on prophesy speak it i step into unusual honor unusual grace unusual grace unusual favor unusual grace hey. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, shut up, shut up. I expect favor. I expect glory. I expect grace. I expect it in my life. I look forward to it. Yes. I am like a well watered garden. Hey, shut up, shut up. Christ lives in me. I have eternal life in my spirit. The blessing is upon me. It speaks everywhere I go. The blessing is upon me. The blessing is upon me. I am a career 
of the blessing it is upon me hallelujah the blessing is upon me creating the garden of eden everywhere i go the blessing is upon me 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 Hallelujah. 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 Say after me, the blessing is upon me. And the blessing speaks. Favor follows me everywhere I go. The grace of God is upon me. I enjoy unusual insight, uncommon grace, uncommon favor. I walk in glory. I grow from strength to strength, from grace to grace, from power to power, from wisdom to wisdom. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be a failure. I am the head not the tail i am above and i am in control shout hallelujah yes yes hallelujah so throughout this week i like you to walk with that mindset you are in control Stop looking weak and beggarly. Listen, it's not a guarantee for you to be proud and arrogant. And when you see other people, you begin to belittle and talk them. You are immature if you do that. You are not spiritual. Are you listening to me? Revelation is not a guarantee for you to talk down others. Are you listening to me? When you find someone who has not seen the light, you share in love. You don't try to show superiority. Any man that does that, you are being childish. It's a proof of spiritual childishness. Are you listening to me? One more time, say, I am in control. Lord, we give you praise. Oh, I take charge of my life. I take charge. Parko pariata. I take charge. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. 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 Help me sing hallelujah. From the dead, sing Christ is risen from the sing dead. Christ is risen from the dead. Sing 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 Christ is risen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We are ready to celebrate the great things that you will be doing in this place. For it's by his spirit. Every time his presence is mighty in the midst of his people. The portals of heaven are open over his people. And he begins to release the blessings of the glory, signs, wonders, miracles, and all the manifestations of His Spirit. 
responding to the hunger of his people I know his mighty is in this place hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit Spirit of the sovereign Lord come and make your presence Lord we feel the glory of the living God ha. Hey. Spirit of the sovereign Presence, no, reveal the glory of the reason, Lord. I hail you, I worship you.
I partake. Not a partake. No. I partake. Say, Lord, I receive. Say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I partake. One more time. Lord, I receive. Say, Lord. presence of his spirit inside and outside majestic presence of God to heal to set free to transform to open new doors Father, we worship you. We bless your name. Oh, his presence is mighty. Moses said, accept your presence. Go with with us. That's the secret, his presence. Majestic presence, overwhelming his people in glory. All right, gloriously, King of Kings. Right, gloriously. Do wonders tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, listen, every time we come into his presence, there is a freshness of his glory. Hallelujah. And the first thing he puts in us is a hunger. That's why we sing, the more we know you, the more we want to know you, Jesus. More of you. If that's not your experience, you're truly not in his presence. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. I want more of you. That the more I know him, the more I want to know him, Jesus. More of you That the more I see his power The more I want to know him Jesus More of you That the more I see your love the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you, more of you, more of you. 
That's my prayer tonight. More of you. Jesus, more of you. More. More is my cry tonight. More. More of your glory. More of your power. More of your wisdom. That's our prayer tonight. More of your presence, more of your miracles, and I will say that you are good, and all the miracles you've done has brought me joy. And I am changed, and all the hope I have. I place in you right now. Are you ready to help me sing? And I will sing. And I will sing that you are good. And all the miracles you've done has brought me joy. And I am changed. And all the hope I have, I place in you right now. Father, we declare. I want to start tonight by welcoming everyone to this awesome service, a miracle service for the month of September. This is not a tradition, this is not a ritual. We're responding obediently to a prophetic instruction that God gave us. Hallelujah. I want to welcome as many of us who have come from far and near, in and around Zaria, and other parts, other states. I want you to know that you will never be disappointed. Some of you have come trusting God to see his miracle working power in your bodies. You will not be disappointed. Some of you have come to let the fire engulf you so you take it back to your ministries, to your churches. God will not disappoint you. Some of you have come with a sincere hunger to press for more of Him. God will not disappoint you. Some of you have come because you're tired and frustrated. It's a result of the vicissitudes of life. Tonight you will find rest. Hallelujah. That's why this prophetic meeting was put together by the Lord to reach out to us, to cause us to experience dimensions of His love and of His grace. And so I welcome you. His mighty presence is in this place. And truly, we are serving the living God. That's why we are confident of the things that he will be doing. Tonight he will be releasing all kinds of blessings. Stepping us into new dimensions and new planes in the spirit. Hallelujah. I'll do a short teaching to just set, to set faith in our spirits. Then we release ourselves and experience the goodness and the touch of God in this place. So walk up to three or four people. Tell them welcome. Keep your expectations high. Tell them welcome. And keep your expectations high. Inside and outside. Keep your expectations high. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want to just show us something from God's word to set the atmosphere for the things that the Holy Ghost is going to be doing in this place. How many of you know that all that will happen here and all that is already happening is on account of His glorious presence? Hallelujah. Um, I like to appreciate the senior pastor of this great assembly for granting us permission to use the auditorium and for his kindness pastor emmanuel please i'd like us to just welcome him up stage hallelujah humble servant of god honor to whom honor is due god bless you sir hallelujah now please look up i'm going to be explaining something very powerful and i need our hearts to be open hallelujah i need our hearts to be open so that we can catch what the spirit of god is doing tonight hallelujah a lot of people have thought in their or in our quests to unlock the mysteries of the healing power and the miracle working power of jesus christ so many people have thought of different things all from scripture as to what principles must be in place to experience the miracle working power of Jesus Christ hallelujah and many have taught about the power of the word hallelujah how that the anointing of God's spirit proceeds from the word of God and others have taught about the power of the name the name of Jesus how that at the mention of that name every knee will bow and yet others have attributed the workings of the miraculous to the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and while all of this is true um, men in the body have failed to understand the relationship between the Word of God the name and the authority of Jesus Christ and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in bringing the miraculous to our lives and that's what I'm going to share very briefly hallelujah because many people have rejected the ministry of the Holy Spirit and embraced what we call the word now we have said we are holding on to the word and then many have had very little success in the operation of the miraculous and others have left the word and said it's just the name of Jesus and like the sons of Sceva they have shouted the name of Jesus again and again with little or no results hallelujah yet others have rejected the principles of the word of god and of the authority of the name of jesus and have just opened up and said it's just the holy spirit so who is right and who is wrong hallelujah i needed to first and foremost understand that the character of god is such that all the workings of the spirit and of the kingdom work harmoniously are you listening to me you cannot replace one with another they complement themselves and very briefly i'm going to be showing you how they find their place in the operation of the spirit so let's talk about the word of god the bible says in hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 turn quickly hebrews chapter 4 such a strong presence of the holy spirit in this place your presence makes me whole. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible says, The word of God is alive and full of power. So there's no controversy that the word of God is full of power. Say amen. amen. The word of God is alive, full of power, full of potency. The Bible says he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them from all their destructions. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 10 and 11 the Bible says that as the rain comes down and, uh, and produces dew upon the grass so shall my word be that proceeds from my mouth shall not return to me void 
talking about the power and the potency of God's word. Hallelujah. So we understand that everything in the kingdom, the operation of the miraculous, has the word of God as its foundation. Therefore, whatever you are doing, if it's outside of the word and the principles of God, you can never have the manifestation of the miraculous. Are you following me? The foundation for true miracles is that everything must be consistent with the promises of God, with the instructions of God, and with the principles of God. That's where the word of God comes into play. I've taught us here that the word of God contains, the word of God gives us three things basically. Promises, instructions, hallelujah, and principles. The promises that God has put in his word. And so we find in his word that by his stripes we are healed. We find in his word that um, it's his desire to prosper us, spirit, soul, and body. We find in his word that we have authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. So the word of God gives us information. The word of God gives us the knowledge that we need to operate in the miraculous. So, you see, the miraculous is not a, a haphazard manipulation of spiritual laws. Are you listening to me? The miraculous is an orderly execution of God's patterns and his principles. That when the principles of God's word are followed to the latter, you cannot but experience the mighty working power of his spirit. And so the word of God has its place. It becomes the foundation of everything that we do hallelujah so that all of the operation of the miraculous is within the boundaries of the word and the character of the spirit that way we will be able to run away from the operation of familiar spirits because familiar spirits will operate in a way that may look like god but because of the foundation of god's word we will be able to decipher and then understand that these are not operations that are consistent with the character of the kingdom hallelujah and so the word of god is the foundation for the miraculous you want to walk in the miraculous or you want to begin to release miracles you must be an ardent student of the word not just cramming verses but to have an understanding of the patterns of the kingdom hallelujah for every time the house is built according to pattern, the glory of God will show up. His glory shows up as a proof that it has been built according to pattern. And so the word of God gives us God's pattern, his principle of operation. The word of God gives us knowledge and it gives us understanding. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. No matter how full of the Holy Ghost you are, no matter how um, charismatic and apostolic you are, the word of God must become the foundation of the miraculous. Say after me, the word of God is the foundation of the miraculous. So where then does the Holy Spirit come in? Where does the name of Jesus come in? Because it looks like the word of God is all of it. Hallelujah. The job of the word is to inform us. The word of God informs us. It gives us the orientation. It aligns our mindsets to God's principles. And it prepares our hearts. The word of God prepares the platform for obedience. Because without a word, you cannot obey. Are you listening to me? If I ask you to come, you are coming because you receive the word. Is that correct? Every time there is no word, there is no platform for obedience. And when there is no obedience, there is no manifestation hallelujah so the word of god gives us an opportunity to obey god so when god begins to send his word your direction then you realize that it's time for you to begin to celebrate miracles because his word prepares your heart the word of god will always demand obedience always the word of god does not just produce automatic results it will demand obedience on your own part hallelujah there are so many people who love god's word but are not willing to take steps of obedience and until you take steps of obedience you will not truly experience the miracle working power of god say amen 
Hallelujah. Number two, the name. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Let's turn there very quickly. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get this simple revelation to prepare the platform for the awesome things that Jesus will be doing in this place. Verse 5. Let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God taught it not robbery to be equal with God the literal translation there says taught it not a thing to be grasped or a thing to be held unto it says but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient there you see obedience again unto death and even the death of the cross verse 9 wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above not equal to not equal with above every other name so there are names but there is a name that is above them all every sickness is a name every disease is a name every oppression is a name but the Bible says there is a name that has been highly elevated above them. And the Bible says at the mention of that name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. And it says, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the master, the owner, to the glory of God the Father. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Hear me. The name of Jesus is, the power is not in the pronunciation. Are you listening to me? The kingdom of God is such that when Jesus rose again, all authority was vested in his person. Are you listening to me? So when we talk about the name, we are not just talking about J-E-S-U-S. We are talking about standing in his office, in his authority. Hallelujah. The power of the name is where we get the word exousia. The power of attorney. The capacity to function in the office of another. Hallelujah. So the word of God must be declared in the name of Jesus. That means it must be declared with the consciousness that we are standing in the office of Christ as ambassadors here on earth. For every time you declare God's word and it's outside of the name it's important the realm of the spirit only answers to the name so every time you speak when you speak in the name it becomes the same thing as God speaking the owner of that name takes responsibility for what you are saying are you listening to me if you stand and declare and say be free because you are Joshua Selman there's, there's no reason why the realm of the spirit should obey you but if you say in the name i stand as touching the authority and the office of the king and on that basis i make decree god the owner of that name and the owner of the authority makes it a point of reference to back his word according to jeremiah 1 verse 12 are you understanding how they function so it's not enough to speak the word the word must be spoken in the name standing in his office realizing that i'm not speaking as me i'm standing representing the parliament of heaven i have been given an authorization by the king himself his holy spirit in me being proof that i have been authorized and when i speak to demons and situations i tell them in the name of jesus be lifted what they see in the realm of the spirit is not me the owner of the name shows up and says you had my word it's not the word of the servant of god it's god's word through the lips of faith there are too many believers making confessions making decrees but they are not making decrees in the name hallelujah be healed be delivered be set free i command your life to change and nothing happens in the realm of the spirit because the realm of the spirit is an orderly realm 
there is only one name that has been exalted it's an office hallelujah it's an office if good lord jonathan calls me today and decides to confer the title of a general in the army whether or not i have the experience of a general the moment i put on that uniform standing in that office i can make decrees and every other rank has to submit is that correct when you realize that you have the highest name every in the realm of the spirit submission is according to strata and authority and so when you tell satan bow he will say by by what authority what's your position in the realm of the spirit that warrants this kind of order and then he said let me tell you i am seated seated with christ in heavenly places far above your name and your situation my name may be joshua selman but in the realm of the spirit the voice you hear is the voice of christos the anointed because i'm not speaking of myself i am speaking as touching his authority so when we say satan enough is enough over this person's life yahweh the owner of that name steps in according to jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 amplified says he is alert and active watching over his word not your word his word he only performs his word many of us have been speaking our word that's why there's no performance so you heal in the name declaring the word in his name so the word of god without the name of jesus is important no matter what version you quote it from hallelujah you tell a demon rise up i mean stand up be on your feet and go out he will not go just because you spoke grammar the sons of skiva thought he was just about declaring the word and they gathered the man who was possessed with demons and said we adore you hallelujah they made that declaration but in the realm of the spirit they were speaking of themselves and as a result the demon proved to them that he was not blind enough to see the structure in the realm of the spirit and that's going to be the basis you see why we are confident of the things that god will be doing because we are standing in the name hmm. we are singing in the name we are praying in the name we are releasing people from bondage in the name so we declare the word in the name john chapter 14 very quickly thank you for the blessed office that that name carries brings us to a position where we do not just speak empty words jesus himself said this in verse 12 john 14 verse 12 and whatever ye ask in my name that will i do whatever ye what ask in my name as touching my authority whatever you ask in my name that's verse 13 that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son 14 it says if he ask anything in my name in my name as touching my office as touching my authority i will do the bible says that all authority had been conferred upon him and he gave us that authority the ability to stand in his stead and to make decrees in the earth realm and he assures us that it will be established so the word of god is god's instrument of operation but the word is not potent in itself until it is spoken from the standpoint of the name hallelujah 
let's quickly talk about the spirit how does the anointing of the holy ghost come into play how does the ministry of the holy spirit come into play hallelujah luke chapter 4 blessed father thank you see every time i begin to talk about the holy ghost i sense his presence verse 16 and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up to read 17 and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found there the place where it was written the spirit of the Lord is upon me the spirit of the Lord has overwhelmed me and he that spirit has anointed me and as a result of that anointing I will do the following to heal the sick to bind the brokenhearted to preach deliverance hallelujah so every time the word is spoken as touching the office of christ the anointing of the spirit responds the anointing of the spirit moves in the direction of that word that means when you say be healed it's the anointing for healing that will move when you say be healed the anointing for prosperity will not move because the anointing responds to the word that was spoken he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good how did he do the good by speaking but the Bible says it was the anointing that was responsible so every time he spoke as touching the authority of his father the anointing was released in the direction of whatever he was saying this is the secret of the miraculous the harmonious working of the word of God the authority of his name and the anointing of the spirit hallelujah every time you speak the word you release the manifestation of the spirit Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 the Bible says that and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered in response to the word and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet the spirit entered me John chapter 6 verse 63 it says it is the spirit that gives life the flesh profited nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit although I'm speaking the agency of operation in the realm of the spirit is the manifestation of the Holy Ghost so when you say be healed it's not just the word b-e-h-e-a-l-e-d that makes it happen that you are saying be healed standing in the office of Christ the Holy Ghost who represents the continuation of the ministry of Jesus on earth responds with his power and his presence The harmonious walking of the word standing in the name of Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to find expression so when you see us just saying Holy Spirit thank you for your anointing we are not replacing the word we are saying by reason of your anointing we are sure that the moment we begin to speak how come is when we begin to speak that there is a rapid manifestation of his power because the anointing responds to the word they were never supposed to act in antagonism to one another you can't say i choose the word what are you choosing or i choose authority me it's just jesus christ hallelujah in genesis chapter one the bible says there was darkness and chaos the holy ghost was hovering around ready to release the power but nothing could happen because the word had not been spoken and god said the word immediately the holy spirit went into motion and there was light that's the, the same way when we say be healed the holy ghost 
is already in this place strong with his power we are gathered under the authority of jesus so you can be sure that he is in her midst when we begin to make decrees and rebuke satan the power of the holy spirit the operation of angels and all of the manifestations in the realm of the spirit begin to happen in response to our word brothers and sisters this is the dynamics of the operation of the miraculous and tonight we have the living word of god what does that word tell us that is god's desire for you to be sick is that what it says is that what the word says that is god's desire for you to be poor that is god's desire for you to be weak that is god's desire for you to be oppressed is that what it says jeremiah 1 i mean um 11 29 verse 11 it says i know the thoughts i think towards you said the lord my thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end the bible says no inhabitant of zion shall say i am sick hallelujah said upon mount zion there shall be healing and deliverance and the people of god will possess their possession so the word of god tells us the mind of god for tonight's meeting the word of god tells us that god is in the business of healing are you listening to me so that we can align with what god is doing the word of god tells us that he's willing to heal and to deliver it says i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health is god's will and desire to bless us said i have given you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy he said nothing shall by any means harm you so the word of god has told us already the mind of god concerning tonight's meeting there's no point asking god is it your will this cancer has been there so what the word of god tells us the mind of god it tells us god's opinion is it your will for me to be living from hand to mouth no sir the word of god gives us a revelation of god's perspective about your life the doctor said you have a terminal disease what does the word god say he said i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing he said choose life that you may live so your life is not tied to any sickness there are many of us who believe that sickness comes from God it's a nice way of just helping us and training us so why are you looking for a miracle if you believe it comes from God because you will be opposing what God is doing then hallelujah many people say well i don't believe in miracles the day you need one you will believe in miracles hallelujah the day the doctors tell you i'm sorry on that day you will truly believe that he's a miracle worker how about oppression many of us have been under all kinds of bondages by satan but well, the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. Above all. All means all. All means all. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us that we have been raised together with Christ. Above thrones. Above dominions. And every name that is named. Both in this age and in the age to come. So the word of God gives us a revelation of God's opinion about tonight's meeting and i bring you a message of hope and healing i don't care what situation you came here with i know that many of us came with um requests and prayers we have some that have been sent all over the nation people sending in their honest requests but don't just come and say god can you heal me can you can you not no 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 for he is able Oh, God is able. He defeated Satan. It wasn't a combat. It was a flawless victory. Now that you know that he's able, is he willing? Oh, yes, he is. He's willing for it's consistent with his character of love. Every 
manifestation of love is giving in nature and so he, because he loves us he wills to heal us we are standing as touching the name and the office of Jesus Christ and tonight I want you to know that he is here I am not him the mighty one himself is here and as touching his authority we are going to be releasing people into the glorious promises that God has for them and I am happy that my senior friend and partner in ministry is in this place the glorious Holy Spirit the beautiful Spirit of God the one who comes to turn every wilderness into a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine into a forest the one who brings beauty and glory the one who supplies the anointing hear me the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing it's impossible to have the anointing without him the one who gives direction gives direction the one who will grant us abilities shortly we are going to be operating in the gifts of the spirit it's not our gift it's his gift freely flowing satire. the one who sees the secrets of the hearts of men it's called the Holy Ghost the spirit of the living God the one who will begin to touch you and shock you at the point of your need we are confident of his great presence and the power of his voice for he said in Isaiah 30 you will hear a voice from behind and that great voice is here to speak and direct us to walk according to the word the aim of this meeting is not just for you to receive miracles for yourself but you will be empowered so that you will be a dispenser of the miracle working power of Jesus Christ hallelujah that's what the Lord is going to be doing I am so happy now you know there's no magic there's no abracadabra about the miraculous no the harmonious workings of the rhema of God the spoken word that word that is conveyed standing under the office of the Christ himself the Holy Spirit bearing witness in signs and wonders that's what gives us confidence and I'm happy for his glorious presence how many of you are ready for what he will be doing how many of you have had faith rise up in your spirit I don't care what the sickness is I don't care what the oppression is whether you're standing in for your loved ones or not I don't care what the situation is lack poverty death everything that represents darkness will bow to the name of the Christ the living God terminal diseases will die all kinds of oppressions will give way and many of you will live here with a fire in your spirit that with this spiritual understanding you will find yourself dispensing the miracles of God are you ready for what God is doing in this place oh I'm excited in my spirit my father thank you for the wonders the operation of your spirit the outburst of the miraculous in this place we give you all the praise and we ask in the name of Jesus that everyone in this place comes under the authority of the Holy Spirit and under the influence of his anointing that as the word is spoken let it convey the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit into your life rise up on your feet go ahead and begin to pray Make up a rasekabari and a bakata. 
Rakapate kapali akatosata. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your spirit. Tell God now is the time for that tumor to disappear. For that blindness to go, that bone condition to go, that deafness to leave. Now is the time for the reign of Satan and evil to go once and for all. Once and for all. There's no contention between light and darkness. Come The time is here. The word of God is strong in our midst. His authority is mighty upon us. And his anointing is strong to heal and to deliver. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, I came here for business tonight. God is already doing great and mighty things. Be thou and through on high and through on high and through. My God, just said, I sense the power of God strong. song one more time hear me one more time as you lift up your voice there are 11 people that the power of God will come mightily upon let's have those people 11 people the Lord shows me as you lift up I see fire just swirling in the atmosphere be thou and through be thou and through Get ready. The fire of God is falling. The fire of God is falling hey, right now. Shagana. Soko Pariakata on 11 people. Please let me have them outside here right now. It's happening. Soko Soko Pariakata. 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 Catching the fire inside, outside. Make it for the second day. For so for the day. Make it 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 for the day. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. 
Satan, let that girl go now. Hold on. Leave her. Leave her. Out of her. Now. Out of her. Now. Come out of her. 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 That devil come out of her. Sataka Topo Kosia Shapatani Baun Shakapata Iparata Sakapatani Baun Shakatalabada Badai Reposa Kapatoli Baun Shakapata. No enchantment and no divination. Hallelujah. Hear me. The Lord is showing me families here. I really want us to be as fast as we can because the ministers are also going to minister. I see some of you here. I don't know what I'm... God is showing me a river and I'm seeing a lady. Your parents go to that river and do something very diabolic and demonic and it has been affecting you. Hallelujah. You are in the congregation. When I shout five, I make five counts. The power of God is going to come upon that person and you will be free. That's what God shows me. One, two, three, four, five. Total freedom. Total freedom. Total freedom. Total freedom for that person. Total freedom. Those devilish. Total freedom. Bring the lady. You are free, my dear. Free. Please bring her. I set you free now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now you are free from that oppression. Oppression you cannot even explain, not knowing where it's coming from. Be free now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bone conditions. Bone conditions. Bone conditions. Bone conditions. Kabaseka porasika. Any kind of bone condition. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every kind of bone condition. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Hold on. Come. God is not done with you yet. For you don't know what you are being delivered from. Let me tell you something. God is setting a great deliverance for you. Just look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. I want you to look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Just maintain your gaze and look at my eyes. Something is happening to you. You will be totally, totally free. Hmm. You know my voice. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. Be free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I see some ladies here having ovarian cyst. For two of you, it's at the initial stage. You've been feeling pains. You think it's appendicitis. The Holy Spirit tells me ovarian cyst. Hallelujah. Right now, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus be free be healed be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ ovarian ceased there's a woman okay not one person i think about two people you brought the picture the picture you came here with a picture of your loved one or your daughter or something not a please don't just come out carelessly there are two people god is showing me who is that person who is that you where's the picture lift it up come where's the second person there's another person where is the picture what is wrong with them because she's my ex-girlfriend she's your ex-girlfriend yes sir are you born again yes sir very born again yes, sir. jesus is lord of your life what is wrong with her Nothing is wrong with her, sir. Nothing? Yes, sir. You just brought her a picture? Yes, sir. Is she here? No, sir. Hold on, hold on, my dear. God is doing a work in your family. Whose picture is this? My dad. Your dad? Yes, sir. What is wrong with him? Since when he went for his mother's burial, he came back from the village with illness. He came back with illness? Yes, sir. Let me see the picture. I'm sure more words will be coming. I'll give the minister some opportunity. I want us to finish very, very fast. Is this the only that's his picture too my mom this is your mom yes sir. what is wrong with her nothing i just came with the picture okay your dad is sick right now yes sir look at me look at me open your eyes you believe you can stand in for him yes sir. and receive what's wrong with him he's not just feeling fine you are going to hold this picture okay, sir. as soon as you touch this picture the power of god will run through you and hit your dad right where he is I listen to me listen that's what God is giving me just touch the picture just hold it that's the instruction God as soon as be careful as soon as you, it will be a strong anointing upon you that's what I'm sensing hold the picture hold the picture in the name of the Lord Jesus the power of God touches your father right where he is we command healing, instant healing, right now for him. Father, we pray that this lady will know the Lord and will walk in her ways. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord asked me to speak these words while I was praying to my closet. The Lord says, For I'm uncovering their plot. He said, And lead us. He said, Lead us in this country. He said, Certain leaders will be brought to the law as a result of assassinations and terrorism in this country. I was praying, and God began to speak to me and asking me to pray about the independent celebration of tomorrow god says for this hour he said i'm listening to the prayer of the president of this nation he said even as nigeria enter into our 51 anniversary our independence anniversary god says i'll cause the prayer of david in psalm 51 to be answered in his life god says for as many that can stand on their watch as watchman tonight he gave me the instruction to stand from 11:30 and pray into the 51st anniversary of this nation he said for as many watchmen that will stand and pray tonight into the celebration he said i'll avert evil tidings in this nation the bible say pray for the peace of jerusalem they shall prosper that love thee i will declare tonight that peace within our walls and prosperity in our palaces Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm seeing an infant baby, a little baby, fair. I don't know if there's anybody who brought a baby like that 
God wants me to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a little fair baby, an infant baby. For I see the spirit of infirmity coming upon that baby. From outside, inside, you came with a little baby. I'm seeing that baby. God asked me to pray for that baby. Where's that baby? Ushers, please help us. I see a spirit of infirmity come upon a little fair baby. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you because this baby's life shall be spared. We cause the spirit of infirmity tonight. We cause the spirit of infirmity tonight. We declare that this baby's life is preserved by the anointing of the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For I hear the Lord says, I opened the door for his father. I see certain limitations. I see certain hindrances and frustration that he has experienced even around the works of his hand God says I'm opening doors tonight God says I'm opening doors tonight God says I'm wiping your tears for I give you a new song tonight says the Spirit of the Lord oh thank you Jesus thank you Father Lord we give you praise my sister look at me God says, even that abdominal pain, excruciating pain that comes upon you even in this area, God says he's bringing deliverance. Lift up your hands. Look at me. Look at me. Lift up your hands. You, you. Lord, I pray for her right now. I command deliverance to come right now in the name of Jesus. God says, I'm even causing doors of marriages that have been shut to be opened over your family in the name of Jesus. God says doors of marriages are opening tonight. God says I break that limitation. I break it tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. God says your family will begin to celebrate because marriages are coming. Watch it and see the word of the Lord being fulfilled in your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that curse is averted. Lord, we give you praise. Busy, just lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that you leave this place whole. We declare that infirmity will not find its root in your body anymore. We declare that your back will not touch the hospital bed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saying somebody, like while you were born, some cuts, marks were given to you in your body and certain incantations were done. And this is what has been responsible for misfortune that you have been experiencing in your life certain circles of evil that has been coming to you where are you just stretch out your hand he's a guy where are you just come i want to pray for you right now god says that you will be broken over your life where is that person please just lord i pray that those marks those marks of incantation that was put over your body that is responsible for the evil i declare it broken right now I declare freedom to you in the name of jesus i declare you delivered in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm hearing the lord give me the name charles i declare over you in the name of jesus that those marks of evil are broken i declare freedom and liberty to you right now in the name of jesus be free Charles, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands where you are. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you are rolling away those limitations. I declare open door for him in the name of Jesus. The Lord says open door comes to you right now. God says that place that you have experienced frustration, God says is about to give you victory right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mrs. William, just lift your hands. God says, I'm answering your prayer tonight. God says, I'm bringing the desires of your hands, the desires of your heart into your hands. He said, from now henceforth, the intimacy that you have desired with my spirit, you will need to see it like never before. God says, stretch your hand. Just put your hand like this. I see the Lord says, you begin to see the anointing to heal come upon your life. As you minister to people, you begin to see the anointing to bring healing upon their life. I declare it, take it right now. I declare the anointing to come into your hands. Let the fire of God burn into you right now. 
Born, born, born in the name of Jesus. Bridget, lift up your hands. God says, I'm anointing your foot tonight. He said, I bring acceleration to your foot. In the name of Jesus, take it. Refine as fire, take it upon your life in the name of Jesus. Among the people that Apostle was praying for for bone condition, I see somebody, the injury that you have in your bone came as a result of an accident, a car accident. You had a car accident and you have injury somewhere inside your body. Just lift up your hands. A car accident. A car accident that left you with an injury. A car accident that left you with an injury. Put your hands there right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing virtue. Be healed, be healed, be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let like God says, it's a door of opportunity that I'm open for you in this season. God says, within now and December, watch and see the opportunities that will come for you in your sound work who amaze you to be more than you have ever experienced in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anu, I want to pray. I hear the Lord says, I'm averting that conspiracy over your dad. I don't know what's happening around him right now. I don't know that which has been happening that is a concern to your family. But God says, I'm averting a conspiracy. God says, and I'm bringing a testimony and your family shall celebrate. I release that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Celebration come. The conspiracy is averted. I see that it even has to do with his work. Only look at me. I see that it has to do with his work. Certain people have teamed up against him in his place of work. Am I saying it? Yes, sir. Certain people have teamed up against him in his place of work to lift him down, to bring him down. But God says, I'm causing that spirit to be averted today. And God is bringing a testimony to your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just before, sorry, one minute. Do we have any Stephen Daniels in this place? From the time I stood up here, I've been hearing Stephen Daniels. Stephen Daniels. That's your supervisor. Stephen Daniels. I've been hearing Stephen Daniels from the time I sat down. Stephen Daniels. I don't know who he is, but I hear the Lord said that he's bringing rapid increase and restoration for Stephen Daniels I don't know I don't know who Stephen Daniels is but I've seen that the man has been oppressed by people again and again God is showing me that he has been oppressed the Lord is saying tell Stephen I Daniels I'm bringing him rapid restoration and increase hallelujah can you come down please, please when when the worship was on I was sitting there and the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about what is going to be doing in the to the church in the area of finance. I saw the, the Lord open my eyes and I saw angels in charge of finance, in charge of uh, wealth and uh, prosperity being released in the church like never before. And I saw something like a something like a, a in the shape of a stone, like a diamond, being dispersed to the hands. There's a lady, there's a black lady sitting. The black lady by the camera there, you there. You there, yeah. I saw something like a diamond being given to you during worship. And I know it has to do with prosperity to your family. To your family, I hear that. The Lord said it's going to be releasing a prosperity anointing upon the church like never before. And the Lord told me that one of the things is going to require from each and every one of us is obedience. So when you're talking about obedience, it confirmed what God told me. And I was asking the Lord, what about, uh, uh, what role does uh, faith, does the fear of the Lord, does holiness and everything does? And the Lord told me that if we just obey Him, by obeying Him we will live in holiness, by obeying Him we will walk in faith, and by obeying Him we fear Him. 
So the Lord said it's going to be releasing wealth to the church like never before. And also, Reverend Ima, can you come to the front? When Apostle asked uh, the usher to pick you to the, the stage, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw the Lord opening a door for you to travel out. And the Lord said, He has seen your faithfulness. Even you, you and your wife have seen how you have managed a lot of little, little resources. The Lord said, He has tested you, He has seen your integrity. He has seen your faithfulness. He will reward you. And also, my brother, during the worship, when the choir was worshiping, I saw an angel of the Lord changing your clothes. You, I, see, I saw an angel of the Lord changing your garment. Changing your garment. I don't know what that means. But I know the Lord is going to do something in your family. And also, there's a, there's a lady that has a, a challenge with the chest, a, chest uh, a problem with the chest. It's a periodic problem that normally comes to the chest. I see the Lord extending healing power upon you. Okay, it's, it's bronchitis. Okay. I see the Lord doing a healing upon you. And also there was a guy who prayed for uh, Apostle last time, a guy that was involved, is involved in this student uh, uh, politics. I don't know whether you are here. Well, a guy that was involved in the student politics, that a, a president of, the present president of our session school, Come out here, come out. I'll tell you what the Lord just come. In a vision, I saw, in the, when I was sitting there, I saw in the vision, I saw three men, three men with uh, white, I believe they are Malo people, outside guys. With, open your eyes and look at me. I saw three men with mustache setting a conspiracy against you in place of decision. As a decision that is going to come to you to take. Uh, this very semester, the first semester of uh, next session, are we in the session already? Uh -huh. I see there's a decision that will, that will involve uh, uh, the student relationship with the school, I mean with the school authority. I saw three men with mustaches who tried to set a conspiracy against you, and the Lord said it's going to give you mouth and wisdom, it's going to give you grace and keep you in integrity. Please, can you stretch for your hands and pray for him? Father, we pray you keep him, Lord. Father, I pray you keep him, Lord. I say you keep him, Lord. We pray you keep him in integrity. Keep him in integrity. In Jesus' name. I'm still not Reverend Ima. I see a recommendation. Somebody is going to be recommending you somewhere. Somebody is going to be recommending you somewhere. And the Lord says he's going to grant you favor. In Jesus' name. You can you come? You the lady there, I saw something like a diamond be given to you. A dark lady there behind Jordan. God is going to be releasing unusual prosperity and anointing upon the church. I even saw little children at the age of nine, ten playing with diamonds. And the Lord referred me. And the Lord referred me to the book of Psalm, chapter 24. Verse 1, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the Lord said, if only we we'll walk in obedience to him, if only we we'll walk in obedience with him, if only we we'll walk in obedience, if only we we'll walk in obedience, we shall eat the good of the land. Father Lord, even concerning the family, even uh, the crisis that, that is happening in the family that was at a direct result of financial challenges, Lord, is answered in Jesus' name. We call forth wealth, unmeasurable wealth, to your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sorry, who is Janet? Who is Janet? Do we have any Janet in this place? Come. Look at me. Where's your father? What does he do? He works with ABU. Yes, sir. For how long has he been due for promotion? Mm, 
He's retiring next year. He's retiring next year. Do you know that the the position he's in now, he's supposed to be have been he's supposed to have been promoted um long to another uh what do I call it now? Another step, another promotion, but people have been conspiring against him and I've been seeing uh, I'm, I'm seeing right now that something good was supposed to come to him last year and then there were people that stepped in the Lord is saying I should tell you that she will use you to bring a miracle to your family Amen. now don't don't doubt how it's going to happen just believe what I'm telling you alright the Lord is going to use you to bring a miracle to your family I'm hearing Godia. Anybody with the name Godia, whether you or your loved one, I'm hearing Godia. Do we have anyone inside, outside Godia? God has a word for that lady. Who is the person? Run, come. That's your name. That's your name, Godia. Is your name Godia? Well, I know you to be Sarah. I saw uh, an attack upon you. Hallelujah. Uh, Godia, I saw like an attack upon you. And I, I the, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord upon me. I mean, they called Godia. I saw you in particular walking in cycle. And the Lord said He's going to bring deliverance to you, and it's good. the deliverance is going to be permanent. What the Lord said. Look at me. Let me surprise you. Look up. He's a tall, young man. He will meet you in white. He will be wearing a blue tie. That's your husband. Yes, yes it's true. It's true, sir. It's true. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. That's, that's, and that's, it's true. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. That the Lord will bring a great restoration to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, the Lord told me about some conditions, people with blood challenges okay you have blood challenges different kinds of challenges in your blood whether it's a sickle cell or something in your your blood system different terminal diseases in your blood please quickly come the lord began to tell me that change the seed okay change the seed and change the tree hallelujah so it's from the seed from their blood system we'll be trusting the lord to do a thorough job in you to change it. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. And now the Lord began to show me a particular case. Um, especially a young man. You gave yourself, you, you like watching horror films, especially vampire films. It's beginning to affect you terribly. I see it drawing you close to coffins. Okay. Quickly come out. Then I see words of knowledge for people with um, pains on their joints, just their ankles, specifically ankles. Ankles, you have pains on your ankles, quickly come out. Then I see the word for, there's somebody here who's like a block on your, your neck and your head just here. You feel such pain, strong pains, like a block. Quickly come out. The Lord began to tell me he's going to be releasing, releasing fire into our hearts, to the hearts of so many people. Mokhtar specifically, the Lord says he's going to be imparting fire into your heart, to your heart in this meeting. Hallelujah. We'll be praying for you. Please, let's just lay hands on them. Uh, you, madam, you come. I see the Lord giving you a, see a job. As Please, as they lay hands on you, the power of God will come I upon see, just you. Just stay there. Don't come, don't come close. Stay far. I see the Lord giving you a walk, a very good walk. You've been asking him, you've been praying and asking him to do something. 
And he said that he has answered your cry and he's going to give you a walk before the year, year runs out. A good walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, um, when John first stood here and was giving a prophetic word for the nation, um, I didn't want to say it, but God asked me to say it. Last, last year, I had a vision, a real vision. I was there, and I saw the coffin of a prominent presidential figure. I saw that he died and they were taking him and the Lord says it's happening soon this country is going to lose a prominent presidential figure on account of their wickedness and things against God God will bring judgment write it it will happen hallelujah God will bring judgment God will bring great judgment great judgment great judgment hallelujah I want to pray I'm really trying to ensure that we beat time we can flow um, let me invite Mr. White is God showing you anything? yes let me just invite Mr. White is God showing you anything? hallelujah um, I was led to do this and thank God he called me up the Bible says when the judgments are upon the earth, the inhabitants of the lands, they learn righteousness. Now I want us to do this, it's very prophetic, it's very, very prophetic. Some of you have been passing through so much in your families, so much pains and so much afflictions by the enemy. We're going to do this very prophetic. All the ministers are going to join our hands and we're going to rain judgments upon all the things that have limited you for, for so long. For so long, it's enough. Enough is enough. When the judgments of the Lord are upon the earth, the inhabitants of the land, they learn righteousness. Wherever that um, affliction is coming from. Listen to me. Some of you, you will hear the news. You will hear the news from your villages and from wherever the affliction is coming from. You are going to hear the news. We are going to rain judgment upon all the afflictions of the enemy. Praise God. That's just what I, I was led to do. And I heard that very clearly in my spirit. Please, Hallelujah. let's join our hands together and do this, please. Okay, go ahead and let's pray. Let's do that quickly. Bring justice to your people, O God. Banta bakosa tabrega de balarabos. Rakata tabaraka de bagasega de balarabos. Lord, let the affliction end over the lives of your people. We forbid the scourging tongues of men in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I was uh, standing there, the Lord began to tell me something about heart condition. And as he was ministering to me, I suddenly saw an angel. Uh, listen, whether you are uh, standing for someone or you are here with a heart condition, as, as the Lord was ministering to me, I didn't just see healing. I see an angel with a heart all right new heart and as i was still pondering over it suddenly i discovered that the angels were three of them three angels with a heart in their hands i don't know who you are outside and inside just receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now supernatural heart transplant now 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 in the name of jesus that's one number two I asked this uh, our sister that will have a baby to stay behind 
I don't know. At the song, there's a woman I see that is, you are, it's like you are desperate. Desperately need of a child. Please, whatever you are, please. The Lord said you should just come and carry this baby. You just say, come and carry this baby. Whatever you are, I don't know. Just come. In the name of you, standing for someone, please just come. Carry this baby. That is a, a miracle. It's a miracle. Yes, it's a woman. It's a woman. It's a woman. Carry hold on. Baby. How many of you want to hold the baby? For yourself or for your loved ones? In the name no, of No, no, no. Listen, listen. Stop laughing. This is a prophetic instruction. We are going to pray for all those who are trusting God for children. But this is specifically... Okay, now that you've seen the baby, you can... Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, we have to do this very fast. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm being told that there's someone being delivered right now from the spirit of suicide. Suicide, you've been you've been thinking about death again and again always thinking about death i declare that you're free right now hallelujah now i'm going to pray for everybody right now hallelujah we cannot go on and on because of time i'm going to pray for you right now now is the time for you to lift up whatever request you came with whatever picture i don't care what it is those who are streaming online hallelujah now is the time hallelujah i hear the cry of children children in my ears i hear the cry of children every barrenness right now in this place i take authority over it in the name of jesus we release miracle children in the name of jesus receive for yourself and for your loved ones in the name of the lord jesus even if they don't have wombs, we give them brand new wombs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Death cancellation. God is canceling deaths supernaturally. There are many of our parents, there are some of us who the debts that we owe and that our parents owe will only take a miracle. I know one of you, your mom was owing people and she's late right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command supernatural death cancellation. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Inside and outside. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you seeking admission into ABU. Promotion comes neither from the east nor the west nor the south it comes from god receive it now in the name of jesus receive it now in the name of jesus your jams come and pursue me notwithstanding receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah right here we release supernatural marriages makaposo to prakata in the name of the lord jesus receive for yourself and for your loved ones there are a number of you who have suffered casualties in your families in the name of jesus we break that bond of delay in the name of jesus fibroids growths cancers tumors die and go out of their bodies in the name of jesus every growth disappear right now right now in the name of jesus hallelujah those of you trusting god for a financial miracle manasseh spoke about it in the name of jesus please see take what we are saying serious we are not just speaking to do a miracle you will record testimonies that will shock you from this prophetic declaration let the holy ghost begin to move across families across bank accounts supernatural increase in the area of your finances receive it in the name of jesus 
know for there is something called the anointing to prosper it's not by mathematics there is an anointing that makes it happen receive it now in the name of Jesus hallelujah terminal disease terminal disease every kind of terminal disease HIV be gone now in the name of Jesus whether in this place or by prophetic connection I come against that spirit be healed in the name of Jesus SS your genotype SS in the name of the Lord Jesus we change it now we change it to AA in the name of Jesus biology notwithstanding we change it right away hallelujah every plague of death every plague of death upon the life and the family of everyone in the name of Jesus you are free from it receive it in Jesus name receive it in Jesus name every plague of death you are free from it in the name of Jesus I see someone with a prayer request for a hole in the heart let that hole close now let that hole close now right now in the name of Jesus Christ let that hole close right now hallelujah migraine headache migraine headache every kind of migraine be gone in the name of Jesus Christ many of you are trusting God for your school fees for the next session for those of you who are students you shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet you will not beg anybody for your school fees the hand of the Lord will bring it receive it now in the name of Jesus hallelujah many of you are trusting God to begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with clarity and precision in the name that is above all names let your spiritual ears be open right now be open right now every spiritual ears be open to hear the voice of the spirit and let your eyes be open let your eyes be open let your eyes be open visions in the name of Jesus dreams in the name of Jesus prophetic encounters in the name of Jesus receive it receive it receive it receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus a supernatural anointing to heal the sick the Lord says to heal the sick if you believe it lift your hands Lord right now in September miracle service a rain of the healing anointing receive it right now inside and outside the healing anointing receive it is coming upon you like fire in your hands receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it in the name of Jesus receive it God is going to launch entrepreneurs right now I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is giving out trance we'll soon be rounding up many of you will feel fire literal fire upon your head ideas that will shock you hallelujah at the count of three that's what God tells me that it will come creativity that will shock you one two three receive it receive 
receive it receive it inside and outside receive it shaka paroko sobaya supernatural ability for entrepreneurship receive it in the name of jesus supernatural entrepreneurship ability is yours it's yours now many of you will see pictures many of you will see things businesses in your dreams Jordan is stepping into a new level a brand new level of creativity hallelujah hear me the Lord says he's releasing an anointing that whoever you shake you will impart the favor of God now please believe it impart the favor of God I release that anointing now receive it at the back receive it outside receive it the favor of God the favor of God the favor of God the favor of God habits habits I see all kinds of habits masturbation drunkenness lust all kinds of demonic influences be free from them right now 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 in the name of Jesus many of you hear voices in your rooms you hear voices that's what the Lord is telling me voices and many of you see people they talk to you and they mislead you in the name of Jesus Christ right now I cause an eternal separation between you and these voices in the name of Jesus every mental challenge that is impeding your progress in terms of your education or assimilation there are many people you are not dull you don't know what the problem is right now in this miracle service i release the super intelligence of the spirit of god receive it receive it it's yours receive it hallelujah in one minute I like you to express whatever you came here with that has not been mentioned that you told God to meet that me whether financial whether whatever it is lift up your voice in one minute and say Lord I receive now mention it mention it by faith mention it say Lord I receive I receive for my family I came with an expectation make sure you don't waste your stay here come on pray Lord release it upon your people all their requests all their requests all their requests there are many supernatural things happening there's no time for us to bring them but you will go back change knowing that in september miracle service you encountered something 
Hallelujah. The last set of people I'll pray for right now. Hallelujah. Manasseh said it, John Fah said it some one or two months ago. And the Lord has been showing me there is coming a supernatural outbreak of wealth and prosperity. Hear me. Upon the body of Christ in Zaria. I don't know. Hear me, please. I will not tell you what God has not said. Are you listening to me? We have been announcing it. But you see, from this first October we are entering. There is going to be a supernatural release of fearful finances. God will give people instructions that don't make sense. And those instructions will open fearful and fearful doors. And that's what I want to release right now. I want to release it. Let me tell you something, brothers. Until that anointing is upon you, you will struggle for nothing. Just believe me. Until that anointing is upon you. This is one of the major impartations. All of you will live with. If at all you forget anything you receive today, a major financial impartation is going to come upon you. For as many of you who have faith to believe, this supernatural impartation will come upon you. And this will be the major thing, the landmark experience that you will leave September Miracle Service with. Father, you gave me this instruction. And under the unction of the Spirit of God, the one who confirms the word of his servants, I stand as your servant, and that everyone under the sound of my voice, young or old, male or female, in the name of Jesus, receive the power to prosper. Many of you don't have an idea of what that power is and what it does. Receive it right now. Oh, brothers, receive it. Don't reject it. Receive it. It's called the power to prosper. I release it from my heart. I release it from my spirit. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Function in it. The fullness of it. It will speak for you. Because of what God is doing in this season. You will step into a fearful, undeniable dimension of wealth and prosperity that even you cannot explain. If you believe it, shout Amen. If you believe it, shout Amen. If you believe it, shout Amen. If you're here and you're not born again, Jesus is not Lord of your life. Inside and outside, very quickly, I'd like to invite you. These signs and wonders are a mighty act of God. Right now, as we put our hands together, I'd like you to come out. You've not been born again, or you were once born again, but have derailed from the path of God. Inside and outside, leave your seat and run here. Very quickly. You're welcome. Inside and outside. As the Lord is speaking to you, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come. They are coming. Appreciate them. Appreciate them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.